How are you doing, golfers? You know, if I could, before each one of these little segments, I would tell you this is one of the most vital things you'll ever learn. But I'm giving you all these things in little bites and bits and pieces, and it's really important that you get each bite and each little bit down properly in order to create what you're trying to do and to get the results that we really want out of this. In this particular session and segment now, I'm going to show you what release is. You know, I, I've gone to PGA seminars all over the cut and pick and country and I've asked all the famous guys, you just pull a name out of the hat that you've heard on the TV, I've, I've met all of them. And I said, why don't you tell me what release is? Explain release to us so we can help our students. Well, release is just turn it loose and let it go. Turn what loose? Your hands. I said, well, then the golf club will fly down the range. No, just let them work, just do their thing. Well, all that's pretty good, but if you as golfers don't know what that means, along with what they're telling you in the other part of the instruction, you will never have release. And trust me, 99.9% .9 of every golfer who's ever come to me does not have release in their golf swing because of one major bit of information that stinks. And you've all heard it. And it's the worst thing you can ever hear, and what it is, it's dealing with square in the club face. Okay? If you think you can square the club face, you're out of your mind. And if you think a square club face to hit a straight shot, you don't understand physics. <laughs> okay? Now, the reason I say that is because, number one, the golf club is not swinging down a straight line. We're going to talk about that in just a second. The club is not swinging down a straight line. It's coming through an arc. <laughs> okay? The golf club is swinging through an arc. So it comes from over here, gets out to the golf ball, and comes back here in the arc of this circle. Now, if you could tell where this thing is square and all of that, you might have a chance except for one more major thing. If I take this golf club and hold my grip, now, this, by the way, was the number one used shaft in the Masters for like the last three years running. If I take this club and hold it here, I can twist that club head anywhere from 10 to 12 degrees, at least seven or eight. Now, you talk to anyone in the world that has a half a lick of sense as an engineer, and he'll tell you, you can put this grip in a vise because the shaft is off-center, not centered because it's off-center. When you meet, when the golf ball makes contact with the club face, it's away from the shaft, and it's going to create twist. So it means if I have this dead square on the line to the target when I get to the golf ball, impact, depending on how fast I'm swinging, could throw this thing as much as seven to ten degrees offline. And that's how the club is made. And you've got to deal with that. So most of you are slicing a golf ball. That's a whole different issue we're going to talk about later, but today we're going to talk about hitting at least with some better control than what you've had in the past. In order to counter that seven to ten degrees open that happens at the impact that no one can can cure, that's just how the golf club is made, we better come into the swing at least seven to ten degrees shut. Now, I'll tell you the bad part about that is, or the toughest part about it, because I think golf's the easiest game in the world. But the toughest part about all of this is the fact that the difference between hitting that golf ball dead down the center of the fairway or hitting it in the trees, statistically, mathematicians tell us, engineers tell us, there's two degrees at impact. I could hold this up here and try to find two degrees, and you couldn't even see it move. Two degrees is nothing, and that's the difference in hitting it in the fairway and hitting it in the weeds. That yeah, makes you scratch your head and wonder, what in the world, what, how am I ever going to get this thing done? Well, number one, as I've told you earlier, to make a ball fly straight, you've got to spin it perfectly vertically on a perfect vertical axis and fly it right on that plane. There's never been anyone born except Jesus that could do that, okay? So we're not going to try to hit a golf ball straight. Now, in attempting to hit a golf ball straight and knowing in your mind, which is totally false, but in your mind, believing that keeping a square club face will make it go straight, you block this all up to make sure that face is square. And you keep slicing the ball most of the time. And you call, I've heard you call into these shows, and, the, and Mr. Fancy Pants on the TV says to you, you're not getting a club face square. I got news for him, you are getting a club face square, and the torque is twisting open, and you don't have any clue about that. Okay? But a square face is not what we're after. We've got to get something called release in order to make this ball fly. Now, in order to, make, to get what's called release, it's not the hands flipping over, per se, but I'm going to show you the hands in just a couple moments here, but not yet. The hands don't flip over in a golf swing. If I put a hammer in my hand 
the wrist works vertically. Okay? Now, I want you to go ahead and take a close look at my hands now because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come off of that and show you something. If my hand works vertically to hammer, that's the way we're made. You never swing a hammer and your hand flips out of control. The hand always comes vertically. You can take a hammer, grab it, turn it like this and lift it up and when you spank down, your wrist will turn just the perfect amount for you to hammer and it won't turn past it. It'll turn right to it and stop there. Now in a golf club, if I put the club face square, as an example, and put this hand, I'm just using numbers, 45 degrees over the top of the grip, then when I hammer down, the club face will close 45 degrees. That is release. The golf club is square looking on the ground, but it's closed in our hands. If I were to pick this club up here, most Turian pros hold the golf, golf club about like such, 30 to 45 degrees close in their hands. Now, what you don't see is that when they go to the ground, there's a little twisting motion of the hand that squares the club face so it looks square to them, but it turns and rotates the hand over this way. Now when that happens on the grip of the club, now you're going to watch the whole swing so I can show you how this works. When that all happens, the club face looks square. But when this hand got rolled over during this gripping process and I set and tilted into my right side to get ready for some good coil, I feel a lot of tension right here in my forearm. Now the average golfer feels that tension and goes, ooh, I don't like that. So they twist their left hand until they get rid of that tension. You just screwed yourself.